Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so just got news. Nick Nurse has been let go of um, his Raptors duties, head coaching duties. Uh, we got a situation there where it looks like Ime Udoka is the strongest candidate, according to the report. Um, Nick Nurse is going to have a job in about five minutes. It ain't going to take long at all. Not at all. I think the situation over there in, excuse me, in uh, Toronto was very murky. And I think the reason being is because they just haven't really recovered from Kawhi Leonard uh, and his departure. So you got a situation where the team is pretty good, but the timeline is a bit imbalanced. I'm not going to say it's off, but it's a bit imbalanced because you're waiting on Scotty Barnes to bloom into his best self. And then you have him surrounded by guys who are a little bit older, who are a bit more ready to win, who've already won. Um, you know, and it's a situation where they need Kawhi or the equivalent to lead them as they've already been able to prove when they have that piece, they can be champions. So um, Scotty will be that piece in my opinion, but it's going to probably take another four years, five years before he's able to reach that level. You ain't got that, but you ain't trading Scotty. So it's time to blow it up. And as simple as that. And so rather than to blow it up because they have such really good pieces, they don't want to just, just start throwing them away. You don't do that. You move on from the coach and then you figure out which pieces you want to move. Um, I, I can see them going into the offseason looking to probably uh, improve their role-playing players because that's really where they're, they're lacking right now. They just depleted their bench, kind of made some decisions, didn't really work out, didn't develop players as much as maybe they should have. That's where they need to go. But uh, I think Nick Nurse, it was just time for a change of scenery. He came in as a rookie coach, won a championship, and then Kawhi left. And I think what ended up happening is he was still a young coach. <laughs> and so some of those guys are trying to figure out how best to, to kind of, you know, work things out up there without having enough. And uh, I just think it just kind of wore its, they run its course. So that that's just what I saw from afar. Uh, team kind of underperformed this year. Like I said, player development, they didn't really use a whole lot of their young players like they should have. And so uh, I just think it's time for some things to change over there in, in, in Raptor land. I really believe that. Masai Ujiri is one of the best GMs out there and he has some desirable pieces and I know he didn't move a guy like OG Ananobi um, in the, at the trade deadline when we thought he might be going to the Grizzlies or the Pelicans uh, but he did put himself in a position to have those pieces in place to trade this summer and so I'm curious to see if OG gets shopped I'm curious to see um, if they do decide to maybe blow it up because all of those pieces in my opinion are valuable and they can retool rather quickly and you see what Rudy Gobert went for. And what would Pascal Siakam go for? And I mean, not to say that anybody would ever do anything like that again, but big picks should be on the way for you if you decide to move a piece like that. Um, now, the thing about the Raptors, this is the problem, in my humble opinion. All of the players that they got, they drafted. So you're giving up on your homegrown players, and, and that's what happens here if you blow it up. It's like you, you got to sell to your fan base that everybody that you developed and drafted should be let go of. And that is not as simple as what it is. I'm saying it is. It's going to be a lot of very unhappy people if they blow it up, especially if the, what they bring back isn't really, you know, amazing, so to speak. Now, with Masai Ujiri, I expect that it may. I expect that it may. But you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're bringing yourself a couple pieces and you're still only as good as you are right now. Uh, you know, as, as I brainstorm, I look at the Raptors and I say, you know, there are going to be some stars available to make moves. Um guys who have been rumored to be a little disgruntled guys who um, are in situations where the timeline is a little funny. I could see the Raptors being in play for some of those players based on the fact that they have a few players that are going to be trade worthy, who are going to uh, garner a lot of attention. I look at a guy like Gary Trent. He could possibly garner you something nice. Um, you know, I think he's probably worth a first round pick at least, you know. So these are the type of things I'm just brainstorming in regards to the Raptors. I look at a player like Jalen Brown, he would be an interesting acquisition if they could maybe move one of their stars and get Jalen. That would be interesting to me. Um, you know, you look at, at a guy like Trey Young, no one even sees that coming. But, like, they have the pieces to make the move, to do something like that. They they do have to make the pieces. You know, you look at a guy like Fred Van, Le Fre Fred Van Fleet, he is a free agent. I don't know if they resign him, let him walk. This is a really interesting offseason in regards to that. If they can pull off a sign of trade, I don't really know the circumstances there. So, you know, 
it's one of those situations where I got some money to do in regards to Fred Van Fleet's situation. But the bottom line is, he came off a pretty bad season. I could totally see a situation where they have someone else in his stead, even though he too is someone they drafted in the second round at that. So, you know, it's a lot to look at. They have these players' bird rights, and that's a big part of what would be uh, kind of standing in the way. But at the end of the day, for me, I just think the Raptors need to have an influx of young talent that they can use uh, rather than guys on the back of their bench that they just don't, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so that's really what it comes down to with the change of coach. Uh, they bring in Emma Udoka. Immediately, you see the Jalen Brown connection once again. If, if they happen to bring in Emma Udoka, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm the one coming up with this in my head. So I'm not saying I've heard any rumors. This is just me talking. But when I look at all, a lot of the different things that could be on the move, and I, took, I think about where players can be very interesting in certain places, if Jalen moves on from Boston, and you pair him up with whoever's left over there in Boston, I mean in Toronto, you're going to see, you're going to really see him step forward in ways that he just hasn't been able to in Boston, in my opinion, because Jason Tatum has been the number one overall guy. If he go to Toronto, he's definitely the number one overall guy. And so I think he's been uh, looking to move on from Boston. I don't know if he's necessarily looking to move to Canada, but... <laughs> Toronto Raptors could, could could use a player like him. They definitely could use a player like him to pair next to Scotty. You know what I mean? And and, and even though that kind of makes the timeline just like Pascal, he's more so fits Pascal's timeline, which is why I would want Pascal to continue to stay on his team if Jalen were to come there. Uh, but, yeah, I just look at some of the pieces that they have, and I say if I'm Boston, I wouldn't mind having a couple of those pieces. Give me Gary Trent. Give me OG Ananobi. You know what I mean? These are the type of things I'm saying, okay, if I'm going to let go, of Jalen Brown, these are the type of pieces I think I can bring in and still stay as sturdy as I've been and put those players next to Jason Tatum and uh, go work, go to work once again. You know, Robert Williams keeps keep some of the defensive players and continue bringing the noise. And, yes, they'll miss Jalen Brown and some of the things that he brings to the table for sure. But if OG plays his best, you ain't going to miss him too much. Not too much. And so that's kind of how that goes. OG's had some injury issues. Gary, same thing. Um, so I'm not really sure if that's a – viable trade i don't know um i'm just throwing things out there maybe they need pascal in that trade i don't know but these are the type of things that i'm thinking about i'm saying we can get a deal done if i'm boston or if i'm if i'm toronto I, I would be able to get a deal done if i needed to so these are the type of things i'm thinking about man um you know in regards to nick nurse i don't know where he would go next but i have a very strong mind to think they're gonna be some coaches <laughs> moving on from some places so you just pop up and take one of their spots. I mean, I think that that's, you know, you look over at the Houston situation. Uh, that that looks like one he could definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, slip into. Uh, I've heard rumors that they were intending to sign him anyway. So if I'm a betting man, I'd say Houston's probably going to hire him. But, I, ha you know, there are other places, I'm sure, as well. Um, and, you know, to me, I don't think that Silas should have necessarily been fired. Um so that's a little strange for me, to be honest with you. But at the same time, I do believe that Nick Nurse is a fantastic, you know, coach. He's already proven that. And when he has enough talent, um, he, he's already proven he can win. So that's something that's that's undeniable. Um, but I just think Steven Silas did what he was told to do. And I don't know that we saw the ineptitude of the team um, be a reflection of anything other than Tillman Fertitta's intentions to purposefully tank for the betterment of whatever pick is about to come up in this upcoming draft. And so that's where I, I feel a little uncomfortable about that. Um, but coaches move around, and there are other factors that play into things that I would never know because I'm not close to the Rockets in any way. So I'm just claiming ignorance, but it does look – it looks away. So that's what I will say, but I still think Nick Nurse is going to do a great job if he goes there, and I think he would be inheriting a lot of great – kids so in a vacuum that's a good speak that's a good pairing i think um and he could use a change of scenery as i've already said in regards to toronto um and emma udoka going to toronto you know after listening to all that there was for me to hear in regards to emma udoka's situation my thing was i just wanted to see him take about a year off it's been a year so he should be ready to come back to coaching now, Missoula has Boston tightly 
grip. I think he's got that job now. He hasn't done anything that would make anybody want to fire him. Uh, but that's his team. So I think it's kind of interesting to see if in the offseason something strange doesn't happen um, and he doesn't end up in Boston anyway. I, I don't know. Just weird. But from what I understand, it's already been said that he has several coaching opportunities. And, of course, moving on from Boston makes all the sense in the world for all parties involved. But I just remember how Jalen and Jason and the team felt initially when he wasn't there. The whole vibe was basically bring our coach back. And like I said, Missoula's done a fantastic job. So I don't think it's it's a need for a coaching change at all, really, uh, as they're thriving in the playoffs. But it's just a vibe that I got that the, that Jalen and Jason want to play for Ume, Yudoka. So that... That, that is another reason why I think Jalen Brown may be on his way out. Jason Tatum, of course not, because that's his franchise. Um, so that's just how I view that there. Uh, but I do think that there's a chance that the Boston Celtics don't win the championship, because they could. And if they win the championship, then all of this is, they stay. <laughs> Everybody stays in the, in the championship situation. So uh, that's what that is. But if for some reason they get eliminated, um, I think all this kind of can be possible in my opinion. So, um, yeah, man. Nick Nurse out in Toronto, allegedly, supportedly, possibly in in Houston. Uh, that's nothing official, but it's, it's tea leaves, I read. Probably be going to Houston. So we'll see how everything pans out, man. We'll see how everything pans out. If, if, if Emma Yudoka does take the Toronto job, I won't be entirely surprised. Um, my feeling would just be trash. <laughs> Ignore that gut. But, uh, yeah, that, that job is going to be one where, you know, Emmy's used to being able to have a entire defensive team, and the U and, and the roster that he had was especially gifted defensively. So I think it made so that all that he was able to do was able to look even more so increased by the greatness of the talent. If the Toronto Raptors don't improve their talent level, I don't know if he's going to have the same effect on that team, especially after what he's just been through. They're going to need an influx of talent to make them as good as they need to be, or they're not going to be a very good team next year. I'm just telling people right now, the way they are right now, that's where they're headed, it's probably going to be in the same place. It's, well, let me see. They made the play-in tournament, so I don't think they get any chance at a lottery pick. If my understanding of that is correct, they can't get lucky and hop into the top three or hop into the top, you know, get lucky. That would be something that they really could use, though. If they can draft well with the picks that they have, and I'm not sure what picks they have or if they don't have their picks, although I believe they have them. If they draft well and they use find some players that they can actually either use or trade to get some some talent uh, behind those stars, I think Emma Udoka can have a nice first year with the Toronto Raptors. But I don't know if he's going to be able to turn that roster into what it is that he turned Boston into, and I think that might be the idea. I think that's the idea. It's like, yo, he going to just immediately make this, that. And what I know is Toronto's got like half a team, dude. <laughs> like the whole bench is not very not very good. I'm just being honest. It's not very good. So that's that's where they need to improve. Um, not necessarily the coaching move. That wasn't the most pressing thing for me. But the Fred Van Fleet situation is going to have to be resolved. Um, you know what I mean? It looks like he's, he could be walking, which is – in theory, very bad because you want to reclaim whatever value you can for him, but also with his amount potentially coming off the books, and I say potentially because I'm not very certain of his situation, kind of just going off memory. If him coming off the books could be an interesting thing because there's going to be some free agency money to give to some people, and I'm not really sure if now as my mind starts to do all the scrambling that it often does, if they don't necessarily have the bag to give Kyrie Irving. That's whose name comes to mind next. Um, I don't know. You know, Ima Yudoka was rumored to be the Brooklyn head coach, uh, you know, right before the trades were, were made and all that, right before Jock Vaughn was hired. It was it was said that Ima Yudoka was talking with the Brooklyn Nets, and they just decided not to hire him based on the circumstances of how it looked. And that's how they ended up landing on Jock Vaughn. Jock Vaughn. That's my understanding. If that is the case, maybe you're looking at a possibility – of Kyrie Irving having maybe desired for Yuma Yudoka to be the coach in Brooklyn at that time, and KD, maybe they wanted that. And maybe, maybe if I'm reading tea leaves, 
we could be looking at Kyrie Irving possibly replacing Fred Van Fleet and Emi Yudoka and Kyrie Irving matching up and pairing there in Toronto. Because when I look at Kyrie Irving's situation, I say it's tricky. Because you, you're you looking at the L.A. bag. You're like, all right, if the Lakers aren't sold on D'Angelo Russell or if he bounces and goes somewhere else, he can go there. Um, and that's just kind of naturally what that looks like could be possible. The problem is, I don't know if the Lakers have the money to pay Kyrie Irving. He's going to have to naturally take a pay cut to play for the Lakers. And I think I think that might be something he'd be willing to do um, for a championship opportunity, play with the King in his last years. Maybe that's something he might be willing to do. I know he wants to play for the Lakers um, for the Kobe reasons alone. He probably wants to play for the Lakers. So, it, you know, it, his regular salary is something that the Lakers would have to deplete itself of a lot of young talent to get. And so maybe that's not something that's in his best interest to do, to, to either let that happen or take a pay cut. And if he's inclined to see it that way, Toronto, he won't necessarily have to take that pay cut. Um, they can give him Fred Van Fleet's money <laughs> if Fred Van Fleet finds himself walking. Or if they decide to let Fred walk. Now, again, Toronto drafted Fred. So I don't know if that's going to be the easiest thing to do. And a guy like um, Masari Uzuri is not going to be one to just let a max contract walk out the door. So I'm inclined to think that something is going to happen there. Either they resign Fred, which is something I don't think they want to do at that price, or do a sign and trade for him. And I don't know that Dallas wants Fred Van Fleet. Now, <clears throat> you can ship Fred to a third team very easily, but then you ask yourself, okay, where? You know what I mean? And that goes into a whole different space that I don't think I even have the tea leaves to really figure out. <laughs> so that's that's a whole other place. But as you're looking at Kyrie Irving's situation, you're like, all right, well, it's limited because everywhere has a point guard and not everywhere is going to be willing to pay, you know, all the money in the world, which is what he's worth in natural price for his piece at this point <clears throat> because of all the controversy and all the, the talk and everything that goes around i think you know and, and the, and the uh, availability factor and all these different things i think his situation may be a bit limited but if i look at fred van fleet and realize that they don't want to pay him and i know everybody in the grandmama knows fred van fleet's a two-way player so you, it is risky Kyrie's not considered a two-way player there's no question about who's greater or who's better or more who's more so to likely lead you to where you want to go with even you do it's Kyrie. Irving. we know that so if you agree with me in regards to that and you think Kyrie's an upgrade, then and you seen what Fred Van Fleet just did and you saw it was a, a somewhat of a slump season and he wants maximum dollars, then you're probably inclined to let that player walk away. And so that's really what I'm looking at there. And then from there, if you decide to bring in Kyrie Irving, um, potential upgrade, right? Potential. Even though Kyrie's a bit older, I can make the argument to a player, all that stuff, whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, if you're moving on there and you see the Emi Udoka factor is something that would pair him and Kyrie Irving, which is a stretch maybe, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there, tea leaf. Then possibly you see a situation where that can take place. Um, now, I think they would have to shave some salary to make it so that they could pay Kyrie all of his money. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. So that's what it is that I'm looking at, man. I'm looking at that situation. I'm saying Emi Udoka's probably going to want something to come with him, maybe even from Boston, maybe something from Boston to Toronto in the offseason. That's just me talking because I know sometimes coaches like familiarity, especially if they were in NBA finals like situations, they're going to want their guy. So that's that's going to be interesting to see if Boston would be willing to move on from some of those pieces. I know Grant William had a very bad year, so they may be inclined to move on from him if they can replace him with one of those forwards if they see themselves you know, acquiring <clears throat> somebody like Pascal Siakam. You know what I mean? Maybe you see yourself shipping him out uh, in the event you're shipping out Jalen Brown or something like that. But, uh, you know, my, my wheels are turning and people have to understand that I'm literally making all of this up. None of this is tea leaves. This is just me looking at stuff that I've seen and letting my brain put all this together. But I've done that before <laughs> and been right, like literally right, in regards to James Harden going to the Nets two years ago so i might be on to something here um but nevertheless this is a situation where um the coaching change does affect some things in my mind in regards to what would make these coaches familiar or comfortable in situation and if Emi is going to toronto i think he's gonna want to bring somebody with him from boston and maybe even kyrie Irving might be replacing fred van fleet just in my head just from my imagination that's all i gotta say 
Video 44. Thank you for watching.